Well, well, well. Hello, folks. Welcome to season four of our On the Fall series produced by the Stars Among Us. I'm Ozzy. And I thank you very much for tuning in to this thank you tour of mine as each episode is a thank you card to someone who has impacted my life. And on this fourth episode of my fourth season, I'm shining light on Dee Castanio. Hello, Dee. Hello, Ozzy. Hi. <laughs> So folks, uh-huh. I just want to introduce you to Dee. Dee and I met back in 2010 with a dear friend of ours, Gary Miller, who has since passed, I think now five, six years, something like that, right Dee? Correct. Right. And for the time we met, we kept in touch and our relationship has grown tremendously. It's almost like I feel like I have a sister I can fall out to and talk talk to and talk with and share and all that sort of stuff. But D in the, the, the background of D is uh, army, chemist, natural healing, alternative there therapy. And now she's heading a huge association. It's one of the oldest um, organizations for naturopathic medicine, the American Naturopathic Association, which was started back in the late 1800s, and um, we are reorganizing that and trying to pull everything back together. The purpose of the organization is to help heal the sick, uh, feed the needy, and clothe the something, but I can never remember the third <laughs> <laughs> Helping people anyway, that's what we do. How did you get from the army to chemistry? How, or did you learn it in the army, or how did that go? Well, in school, school I was a math major, so I always loved numbers. But um, it's actually not chemistry that's my love; it's biochemistry. So, in my work, order lab work, and then uh, help facilitate the the balancing of your biochemistry to help promote healing. So. My background, or the, one of the reasons for the work that, that I began to do back in uh, 30, 30 something years ago, I am a, a United States Army veteran. And during my basic training in the Army, uh, we were basically guinea pigs at uh, Fort McClellan, Alabama, where uh, we were tested. We had NBC training, nuclear, biological, chemical warfare training. And so what they did was was have us go in a tent, say our name, rank, and social security number, and um, they sprayed certain chemicals on us. So shortly after, probably, it doesn't happen right then, but it took a few years for those chemicals to take effect on my system. So as I began studying and researching and trying to help save my own life, I was able to educate and um, collect a, a, a vast um, collection of, of archives and health medicine books back in the 17, 1800s, which I now have a collection of over 20,000. And so my goal was to be able to write at home and not have to go anywhere and to use those books to help other people heal their illness. I just basically coached. That testing time, was that something that you volunteered for or is it something that was part of being in the Army? Um, well, it was just part of the training uh, because, they, you know, you have like one week of using a machine gun and one week of uh, NBC training. So you, you know, they're, they're, what they were doing was basically testing the effects of certain chemicals on your body. And um, so um, there have been several books written about it, and the city was Anniston, Alabama. One of the books is, Our City Was Gone, I believe was the name of it. Um, Monsanto, the chemical company, was manufacturing Agent Orange. I think they moved about 900,000 people through that base who all had training. So many of the people uh, have since died or had um, horrible cancer. Mm-hmm. Through your healing process, you fell in love with homeopathics, right? Absolutely, because in our world, you can't poison a body to good health. 
-hmm. and I had already been poisoned. So the only way to save myself was to get rid of the poison from my body naturally. I didn't want it to try to use any chemicals to do that. Right. The damage was done. I'm fine. And that, right. through that, and then admitting to myself that I did have a gift, which for years was hard for me to admit. You know, as you go through life, you think, well, is that really what I'm supposed to be doing? And then it comes at you from all directions until you finally say, okay, I got it. And that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. Ever since we met, you have been the one person who has uh, who, who has been helping me with my health. With the gift that you finally uh, decided was yours to give, how many people are you working with at, at, at one time? Hmm. Well, I try to keep the numbers down because I am only one person. I did have a clinic at one time, but... Um, that was a long time ago. So I prefer being able to give a more, or use a more personal, personable approach and um, kind of coach that person. So you can't have too many people at one time or you can't give that, that care that you really want to give. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I marvel about you is that um, in your work, you tend to go to the person, it's like, a, doctors of, of uh, you know years ago who would um, go visit the patients you know I, I don't always mean, mean to do that but it happens yeah. when you're in the car right and you're traveling from state to state or wherever um, are you working in the car are you listening to music and if you're listening to music what kind of music um, a lot of the times I'm in the car, I'm working. Uh -huh. I mean, the, the Bluetooth has made that, <laughs> you know, accessible. Yeah. Although I'd love to turn on the Temptations or the Rolling Stones or any other good music uh -huh. and relax. But, um, you know, there are only so many hours in a day. And uh, as you know, people are, are just, you know, they're sick everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I do what I'm led to do. So if you kind of open yourself up to it, you'll be placed where you are needed. Mm -hmm. And that's where I am. What do you enjoy most about what you do? Mm. It's one thing to have the gift. It's another thing to give the gift. But what what is it about it that you enjoy? It's satisfying or gratifying to know that you, you, you've helped a person get back to where they used to be mm -hmm. or need to be, but it's up to that person. I mean, we can only as a coach do so much. Mm -hmm. if, if a person is not responsible and they're not going to do what they need to do, then you don't want to waste your time trying to help them because that healing has to come from the person. It doesn't come from me. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's gratifying to say that, um, that you're just helping helping them get back to where they need to be. And then whatever they learn, they're able to help someone else and we just keep it going. Mm -hmm. What are you most proud of in, in the span of time that you've been doing this? Oh, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. You knew it would be tough <laughs> because I just roll from one to the next. You know, right. I could be working today with someone that has this and then tomorrow it turns out through that so um i try to be humble <laughs> i feel like if you're humble you're not going to want to answer that okay um, I don't get, we get that so with all the traveling that you've done what state do you love the most because you've brought, you've been through a lot of them and you know it's one thing to fly but it's another thing to drive through in the state of happiness yeah, that's mine. That's me. I'm a happy camper. The, the hardest thing for me when I left South Florida was trying to decide where to move to because, like you said, you know, I've, I've traveled a bit and uh, everywhere I go, I'm, I love it. So that makes it tough. Mm -hmm. Out of the country, 
you know, I love Jamaica. I love Mexico. I love Korea. I mean, there's not really anywhere that I've been that I don't love. So again, that's a tough one. Wherever you go, you take yourself. Mm -hmm. But you know, the scenery is beautiful everywhere. It's beautiful in the country, out of the country. And we just, you know, if we don't help each other, we're not going to make it on this planet. So we got to remember that. What do you do on your downtime? If you have downtime? Because you're always downtime. I used to have downtime. And when I had downtime, I was on the dance floor. That's my ah, thing. You and me both. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, but now, I mean, you must be able to chisel out a little bit of time for yourself, you know? Mm, I guess if I do have a little bit of downtime, I grab a book. Um... I found a wonderful book today in, in, in one of my, because I'm moving, I'm moving the archives in the library now into another building for organization. Mm-hmm. And I wish I had it in front of me, I don't, but it was a book from 1911, I think. Mm-hmm. And there was a breakdown and an explanation of the Lord's prayer, like I have never seen in my life. Just ex- expanded on everything and I was like man who wrote this mm-hmm. and um, I think the book was called The Sphere mm-hmm. S-P-H-D-R-E but I'll get back with you on that and, and I'll, I'll copy those pages they were unbelievable mm-hmm. do you have any fears and what would that be especially in this day affairs or fears <laughs> <laughs> I have no affairs no don't uh, fear. fear fears I don't fear I have no fear. Yeah, I really don't. And and we really shouldn't have fear. Mm-hmm. What is one thing that has changed your world perspective? Especially mm. within, let's say, the last two years. Ooh, the last two years have been really strange. I don't know about a perspective, but if there was anything that changed anything about what I think about anything during my entire life, it would be that time in the military. Really? That was life changing. You know, it could be good. It's wonderful training for people to, you know, have that physical training. And then I had a great job, but it's life changing because, you know, I have to tell it like it is, Ozzy. We're just basically getting to and there's no reason for that. I have a very good friend, um, and she is Israeli. And you know, it's it's uh, there. Everybody has to go through the army, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's something that she doesn't speak about. Um, but for her, also, it's been life changing. You would love to know the things that they can't tell you. Mm-hmm. What is the most challenging aspect of your work? This gift, this thing that you love to do? Time. <laughs> huh? Time. time. Yeah, time. Is there enough time? But everybody would say that. And no, 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 no. Because I know you. And you're like a 24, you're really a 24 7 person out there. But in terms of your well care methods, because you have to look after yourself, it's like being on a plane, right? If something would happen, you have to put your gas mask on before you help anybody else, or else you have no use to that person, right? So, you're right, and I'm very good at telling people, <laughs> okay, put your oxygen mask on first. But um, I guess I have mine half on, enough to keep me going, but still stand there and coach it. everyone else. But it is important, and it's very hard to do. It's very hard for you to do because you're always on that other person and not focusing on yourself. Whereas, like, uh, what I've done, especially with this last two years, is really find that time, that sliver of time for my well care. And well, that's then, good to hear because you're the first person to always call and say, see, I have this friend and this is what's going on with her. So, you know, you're right out there helping everyone. Oh, I'm sure you're helping people with this podcast. So. 
There you go. Oh. Oh. Mm. <laughs> so. There you go. He kind of stopped me in my tracks there, madam. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. How's my turn? Has this pandemic made you think, see, believe something that you haven't before? No, because back in the 90s, mm-hmm. I worked with a, a microbiologist who, whose specialty was um, biological warfare. So. I kind of understood what was going on for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's just that the media has made it, um, has put it out front Mm -hmm. and used it to control. Anything new you've learned about yourself, especially within these last two years? I learned that I don't like to put a face diaper on when I walk into the grocery (laughs) store. Um, that's about (laughs) Oh. Okay. oh my god. Any pet any pet peeves you kind of picked up or or uh yeah, you picked up this this especially in these last two years. I don't know if you would call it a pet peeve, but I don't like being sent to my room. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call the lockdown. We're getting sent to your room. Uh, oh, gosh. Hey, by yeah. the way, <laughs> have you found that there have been more people looking for um, homeopathic remedies yeah. rather than the chemical highway? Oh, yeah. In the last two years, especially? Yes, I mean, the alternative therapy field has been wide open and suppressed for so long because, as you know, follow the money to the pharmaceutical companies and they're the ones who make money off the chemicals mm-hmm. so um, and I understand that their stock was actually way down before this pandemic mm-hmm. pandemic as we call it so mm-hmm. um, many people of course are taking better care of themselves mm-hmm. because they they don't want to get mm-hmm. sent to their room <laughs> trying to be careful <laughs> any anything on your bucket list like any places that you want you would visit you would like to visit just to just to disappear to rejuvenate to re-energize to just be by yourself for a minute any any place you'd like to visit anything on your bucket list um africa australia italy China, Thailand, wow. and if there if there's anyone out there that's ready to take me, I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's roll. I have just been dreaming of the Maldives almost every morning for some reason. I'm sitting down on this deck, and uh, there's there's just sky meeting sea blue green sea clear beautiful sand palm beaches and peace beautiful clouds in the sky i'm there (sighs) you never took me to trinidad i know listen you know that's one of these days i keep saying that uh, you know i would love to be able to to charter a plane and take my dear friends on a quick trip. And that was the dream that I had for Carnival. Now there's no Carnival because of this thing. And it's like, okay, now it's got, I've got to change that dream a little bit. But yeah, let me tell you. One right. of these days, D. One of these days. And D, I just want to take this time to say to you, I really, really treasure having you in my life. I really, really appreciate all that you did mentally, physically, psychologically, and with with some uh, serious elbow grease when it came to my son. 
you were there and it wasn't for you, he would not be out there walking around right now. And well, you were the one with the elbow grease and you were the one with the diligence. No, but if it, your knowledge and, and what needed to be done, if you weren't there and you were the one that came all the way, was it from, from Florida to California? You know, that to me was uh, 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 an amazing thing for anyone to do for me. And, the, and I just wanted to be able to say this for all time, I love you. I, I have to come out there and sit, sit in one of your chairs for a little bit. Hopefully you'll be there when I do come because who knows, you might be in some other part of the country. <laughs> I'll wait for you. I will wait but for you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I this connection that we've had since Gary. Um There are no words, you know? Thank you. I think it was before 2010, actually. I'm thinking about it now and I'm saying, wait a minute. It might have been, yeah, in Florida. Maybe like 06 or something like that. Yeah. I'm not thinking, because I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, this place and, and, and yeah. Wow, D. It seems like a lifetime. I don't think I had gray hair. I don't have gray hair now. I say die till you die. Yeah. Die till you die. But, um, yeah, we were a little bit younger. Yes, we were. And so, thank you. And I'm just going to say this to my audience. Thank you, audience, for spending your lovely time, your valuable time with us today. Please hear us and remember, when you're on your beat, stay on the sunny, sunny side of the street safely be mask conscious <laughs> it's still real out there it's real. and you know d you know i know you're a busy person and you have another meeting coming up shortly but i really really appreciate you taking this time to be with us with me for me for my son um to today thank you ozzy i love you both talk to you soon stay well you too. Stay safe. You too. <laughs> All right, thanks. Bye. <laughs> hey there. Please help us in our mission to support those facing fatal diseases through our t-shirt sales by donating or shopping at aussiestewart.com or supporting us at anchor.fm forward slash aussiestewart. That's A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M forward slash aussiestewart. And don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel at Ozzy Stewart. Yep, leave a comment.